Mr. Revolver Guy with DayAtTheRange.com. So as you can see, I did not intend to make this episode. I only intended to have seven episodes, seven being the final episode of the miniseries and comparing the Kimber K6S to the Smith & Wesson Model 640. For those of you that have been following the miniseries, you know that this is the Smith & Wesson Model 640-1, which is the Magnum Centennial Edition. And this is a rather special edition, which is the Smith & Wesson Model 640 Paxton Quigley Performance Center Edition. I had no intent, as I stated earlier, in making this video at all, uh, but I was surprised to see some asking for so many technical details. I did get a few emails uh, after making the last episode on the performance of the 357 Magnum Fiocchi ammunition through these two revolvers. Most of you that are revolver fanatics know that feet per second or velocity can also be determined by the cylinder barrel gap. So I got asked quite a few questions. What is the cylinder barrel gap? or the cylinder gap on these three revolvers. And I will attempt to answer that today with the three revolvers on the bench along with my feeler gauges. So as you can see, all three weapons are clear and we'll go about now um, trying to determine what the, what the cylinder gap is. As you can see here by the feeler gauges, I have um, exposed four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tens of the feeler gauges to try and determine, I believe Smith & Wesson considers um, anything less than 10 to be within factory specs. I have no idea what the Kimber might be or is at this point. So we'll start with the Kimber. And again, you can see that we're starting no ammunition on the bench and, they're, and they all are safe. So we'll start with the Kimber. We'll start with four. I got this screwed up here. So we'll start with four and you can see that four goes right in between the cylinder in the barrel, we'll now test with five. Five goes in pretty easily. We are now going to test with six. Uh, six is getting pretty tight there. Six is getting pretty tight. I suspect seven may not go through. Um, Actually, seven does go in, but it's really, really tight. Let's test with eight. Eight will not go in at all. So the uh, barrel cylinder gap on the Kimber comes out to be 0 0.007. Seven one thousandths. So, we'll now move on to the Smith & Wesson 640-1, which I need to clean before returning it to its owner. I always do that, um, return it better than what I found it. Let's test the cylinder gap on the Smith & Wesson 640 Magnum Edition, and we'll start the same way. We'll start with 004. Uh, I can kind of see through that one. This might be a little large. Four goes in quite a ways. I probably need a little thinner or better feeler gauges, but this is what I have on hand. Five goes in pretty easily. I'm going to test six. 
Huh. Six goes in pretty easily. We'll test seven. Yeah, that's uh, the cylinder gap on this one is surprising me a little bit. That's 0 0.007. It went in pretty easily. Let's see where we are with eight. Eight is actually starting to stick a little. We'll see where we are with nine. And nine won't go in. Nine won't go in at all. And typically, the way you would do these tests, you would actually test each cylinder. I'm just giving a quick answer to some of the emails I gave. Typically, what you would do is you would rotate each cylinder and test each to make sure they are same, the same, to make sure that the cylinder in and of itself isn't cattywampus in any way, form, or fashion. Uh, I do like to spin the revolver or the cylinder as I'm checking them out to make sure the extractor or ejector is not bent in any way, form, or fashion. But when typically when you're checking out a revolver, and you're doing this test, what you want to do is check each cylinder or each charging hole, if you will, to understand what the cylinder gap is. Each chamber, shall I say, is the correct termination. And here we have the Paxton Quigley. This is rather special. I'm interested to see what this one turns out to be as it is a Smith & Wesson Performance Center. Should be made with a little bit more tight tolerances, but let's see, starting out with the 004 again. Goes in pretty easily. We'll swing to 005. Oh, 005 is really tight. I mean, it's really tight. Let's try six to see if it goes. Six will not go in at all at this point. So the Paxton Quigley actually turns out to have a better cylinder gap with 0 0.005. Now, having said that, the cylinder gap, um, or this Paxton Quigley edition, y'all have heard me say it a, a million times through this mini series. This is rather special. Performance Center, there's one of 250 of these made, comes with ported barrel, uh, just a really special revolver. Having said that, this revolver is only capable of 38 special, and I hope the camera kind of focuses in on that, but it's only capable of 38 special, not 357 Magnum. So for those that were asking for the barrel gap or cylinder gap of the two 357 Magnum revolvers that I have here, um, there you have it, uh, the Kimber, Again, I think is made to the quality of the Smith & Wesson Performance Center. So those that are doubting price or questioning the price, I've seen these going on sale for 688 regular 720s. Um, I think they're right on par with the Smith & Wesson Performance Center. Uh, I'm gonna say this and then I think I'm gonna go into hiding, pack up and go into hiding. But you know, I'm starting to wonder with a six shot Kimber, being on the market, what it will do to the Smith & Wesson uh, market share in and of itself. Because I tell you, I am starting to wonder, should I put any of my J-Frame five shots up for sale at this point, now that I have this Kimber K6S? Mr. Revolver Guy, thank you for joining me, dayattherange.com.